In the year 2020 AD, a mission is launched with the goal of carrying humans to Mars for the first time. On their way to Mars, the Mars 2 crew decides to throw a party to raise spirits. A festive ambiance is created by decorating the spacecraft's living areas. The astronauts congregate while consuming food, beverages, and entertainment. They temporarily forget about the difficulties they confront as the room is filled with laughter and companionship. Tim Robbins' character, Commander Woody Blake, makes a speech in which he praises the crew and their achievements. They deepen their relationship through exchanging jokes, anecdotes, and stories. They look at photos and share intimate moments as they think about their loved ones back on Earth. The group enjoys dancing and other fun, light-hearted activities while they are together. The celebration acts as a temporary break, boosting spirits and serving as a reminder of the value of joy and teamwork in the face of their trip to Mars. When the four mission crew members reach the planet, they find a puzzling geological feature nearby. They return their results to the command post on the International Space Station after that, and then proceed to the location to try and get further information. When they get to the formation, they hear an odd sound that they initially interpret as interference from their Mars rover. Two of the mission's crew are killed when a massive vortex forms around the structure they are trying to scan with radar and engulfs them. When a big rock broke a third person's visor, exposing her to the Martian atmosphere, she died. Don Cheadle's character, Luke Graham, is the only survivor from the expedition. A significant portion of the spacecraft's electrical equipment is irrevocably damaged by the formation's extraordinarily potent electromagnetic pulse, EMP. Graham nevertheless manages to upload one signal to the REMO, resupply module, orbiting Mars despite the damage. The Earth Command Center sends a hastily dispatched second Mars mission in response to Commander Graham's muddled transmission, alerting it of the deaths of his crew members. The crew of this new mission also includes mission experts Terry Fisher, Connie Nielsen, and Phil Olmeyer, Jerry O'Connell, as well as Commander Woodrow Woody Blake, Tim Robbins, Co-Commander Jim McConnell, Gary Sinus, and others. Investigating the disaster and bringing any survivors home are the mission's objectives. A swarm of micrometeorites collides with the ship and compromises its hull, resulting in an atmosphere leak as the ship is getting ready for its orbital insertion around the red planet. The team works fast to patch the hole, determining the exact location of the damage before assisting Woody with the patch application with a liquid. Despite almost dying in the encounter, Jim lives. Unbeknownst to the crew, the fuel tanks were also damaged, and when they ignite the main engines, the resulting fuel explosion destroys the ship. They quickly don pressure suits and abandon it, hoping to maneuver their way to the Remo. Circumstances are unfavorable, though, as the Remo is moving more quickly in a slightly lower orbit than the tethered astronauts. Using the remaining fuel in his jetpack and launching himself directly at the Remo while pulling a line from the others, Woody comes to the conclusion that the only chance of a successful rendezvous with the Remo is for him to do so. He ties the cable to the Remo effectively, but he is unable to control his movements afterward, and he floats helplessly in the direction of the planet. Terry chooses to end the call in an effort to save him. Not wanting Terry to suffer, Woody removes his helmet and hangs himself. Luke, the original team's captain, is still alive when the surviving crew members land on the Red Planet. Although his crew's deaths and isolation have left him somewhat insane, he is still able to tell the rescuers about his crew's discoveries and tells them that the formation they saw was the face. He had spent the time by himself trying to uncover the mysteries of the enigmatic building. His most important tip, a recording of the sounds heard around the formation, is presented to the rescue crew. After months of research, he discovered that the sound was an XYZ coordinated map of human DNA. Together, they learn that the enigmatic signals are actually a trigger that needs one missing pair of chromosomes to finish off the human genome. A robot is sent by the crew to send the finished signal, and as soon as it does, a hole opens up in the building's side. They enter out of curiosity, are quickly sealed within, and find atmospheric conditions similar to those on Earth. They locate a sizable, dark space, and when they enter, the solar system is projected in three dimensions. A humanoid hologram of a Martian discreetly explains that the Martian environment was destroyed by a planet-killer asteroid that struck Mars in the ancient past. 
The Martians were compelled to leave their home planet and reside elsewhere. They also sent some of their own simple life forms during their evacuation, though, to the nearby planet Earth, which at the time of the Martian evacuation was lifeless. These life forms gradually evolved throughout the billions of years that followed this seed spreading, see panspermia, becoming the humans who would one day reach Mars and be identified as the offspring of that long ago Martian experiment. One of the astronauts is given the opportunity to travel with the Martians to one of their new home worlds as the picture of the Martian disappears. Jim McConnell makes the decision to go and the remaining crew members return to Earth after saying their goodbyes. Jim finds that he can breathe the liquid after spending a short time underwater in a cylinder that quickly fills with clear liquid.